Hi, welcome to Mini Shops How to Sculpt videos with myself, Elizabeth, and today we'll be making little otters. You can make them into whatever you would like, charms, just magnets, figurines, but I'll show you how to make them as the size of earrings. Let's get to it. To begin, you'll need a work mat to protect your tabletop. A piece of paper will work just great. Some dark brown clay, some light brown clay, some coral colored clay, a little bit of white clay, and a little bit of black clay. You'll need a potter's needle, but a toothpick will work great. A silicone dowel tool, or you can use a pen or pencil tip, and a tool with a little bald end, but you can also use a pencil tip for that. Start by warming up your dark brown clay. We warm it up so it doesn't crack in the oven. Then we'll take about twice as much as we want for each one of our otters, and we'll split it into two. Roll those clay pieces into balls between your fingers, or on your palm, or on your work surface. And once you have those balls, roll them back and forth so they become ovals. Once you have those ovals, just tap them, and then tap the corners that have become kind of square. Tap them until they're a shape that you would like for your otter body. Size them up together, see if they match, and then set those down. Then take some more clay, about a quarter as much as we took for both of those, and we'll split it into two, roll those into balls, and then press them flat. We'll size those up on the body and on the other one. Once you have those on there, take your silicone dowel tool and just smooth those seams together. You can tap those seams with your finger just to make them nice and smooth. And then we'll take some of our light brown clay, warm it up, and we will split it into two balls about the same size as we took for the head. You can roll them into balls again and tap them. Set the light brown onto the dark brown head portion and tap it around if it's the size you would like it, leaving a little bit of dark brown clay visible. And repeat on the other one. Then you'll take a little bit of dark brown clay, again, about a fourth as much as you took for the light brown clay, roll it out into a little string to split it into two, and then roll each of those out and split them each into two. Roll those quarters into balls, Kind of look at them, see if they're all about the same size, and find the center of the head of your otter and go over about the distance of one of those balls on both sides. Pop it on there like so. Do the same thing on the other one. Take your potter's needle or another sculpting tool and just smooth those seams. This will secure those to the head. It takes a little while to smooth clay pieces together, but it's what helps secure them. Once you have that, take your bald end tool and just give those each a little indent in the center. Do that on the other one as well. And then we'll take a little bit more dark brown clay, about half as much as we took for one of the heads, and we will split it into two and roll those into balls, roll them into ovals, then take our fingers into an angle shape and just slightly roll back and forth till it makes a partial teardrop shape and then we'll press that flat. Same with the other one, rolling back and forth at that angle and then pressing it flat and then we will line it up on the otter base on each one. See if we like that size for the tail and if we do we're gonna smooth it in. I like to smooth with the silicone dowel first and then use my fingers to tap, which smooths it, smooths it, <laughs> which smooths it out just a little bit more nicely, I think. Once we have those little tails attached, we're gonna make the arms. We'll take about as much as we took for one of the heads, and then with each of those, we'll split it into four. This one, splitting it into two, and then rolling those out to split them again. Rolling all of those into balls, seeing if they're a good size, like similar sizing. And then we'll roll them back and forth so they're kind of ovals. And then we'll give them all a little tap, and we'll set them on the otter body. I kind of like to make the bottom legs kind of sticking straight up like this. And then the top arms, I set them a little further back because they're going to be reaching around to hold the starfish, if you want them to hold a starfish. Or you can just keep it like that. Then we'll take our bald end tool or our potter's needle or toothpick, and we're just going to indent where the eyes will go, kind of eyeball about where halfway is, and just a little bit to the side and up of halfway is where we will just slightly, slightly tap. And we'll take a look at it and see if we like that placement and then we will indent further. Try to indent straight down otherwise it will become more of an oval shape and we'll repeat that on the other 
about her face. Another way to think about it is it could be in line with the edge of this ear almost. Next, we'll take a tiny bit more of our light brown clay, about as much as we took for one of the ears, and we're gonna split that in two. Now when we're splitting things this small in two, sometimes I take the potter's needle and just press it to split it in two. Once that's split into two, we will split it into two again. You can also use a butter knife or an exacto knife for this, but if you're using a knife, don't cut it on your finger, just cut it on your work surface. Okay, once you have those, roll them into balls and set two together. This will be for the mouth and we'll set those right below the eyes. And we'll take our silicone dowel tool to just indent them ever so slightly into place. You can even take your potter's needle if the line has gotten a little bit smushed. And what I also like to do is take just the tiniest bit of clay, roll it into a ball and set it below those two. Smooth that in with a sculpting tool and repeat on the other one. To get tiny amounts of clay, you can also take your toothpick, potter's needle or any other sculpting tool or a knife and flick it off from the clay. If you find that these small pieces get stuck to your hands, you can use your tools to set them as well. Next, we'll take just a tiny bit of black clay and here's where I will take the potter's needle to just flick a little bit off We'll roll that into a ball, we'll make our fingers into a little tiny angle, and we'll pinch it into a triangle. Then we'll set one of the points of the triangle in line with the center of the mouth. Tap the top of the nose and then tap the sides to ensure that they're nice and triangular. Once you have those little noses on there, we're gonna do the eyes. We'll take just a little bit of clay off with our potter's needle and then we will split it into two and then roll those into balls. And here's where I take the silicone dowel tool or the potter's needle. I'm just gonna slightly set them into those indents. I'm gonna do this next one, setting those into the indents. And I'm not tapping them in yet because I want all of them to be kind of the same size. Take a look, see if they're gonna be about the same size and just nice and gently press them down. And then I like to add little eyebrows. So you can just do a little tap of your potter's needle above either eye. Now take your coral clay if you're going to add a little sea star and take about twice as much as you think will fit in there. Split it into two, roll those into balls, and just set those in there to see. What you'll do is you'll take that ball and you'll flatten it between your fingers. Take your silicone dowel tool or your potter's needle or something, and you'll just kind of make an indent on one side, then the other, another side, the other, and down below. And then you'll just make those indents deeper and deeper, and make the little star. And you can press it flat as it gets further up, indenting. This also takes a minute, and if you need to, you can also draw a star on top of your little circle, and that'll help you know where to put your indents. Okay, once you have that, take your potter's needle to kind of take it off your finger if it's gotten stuck, and then you can set it there on your otter. Give it a little tap to secure it, and then you can adjust it as needed. And then take the potter's needle, and I make little indents on each section. This helps secure it and makes it look like the little ridges of a starfish. Now you can leave your otter without texture, but I like to add some texture to them. Starting with the face, we'll take our potter's needle and we'll just make tiny, tiny little etches. You don't have to do this part, but I like to do this part just for the aesthetic of it. Making little teeny tiny etches all around the face. And when you make these little etches, it's kind of like you make a little flicking motion, but don't have the end of your flick be too intense, otherwise the potter's needle might catch somewhere else of the clay. You can also take your potter's needle to make three little dots on the mouth. Next, we'll take our bald end tool or your silicone dowel tool, any of those things. I just press it in, kind of pull and repeat. And work my way all the way around. I start with the body and then I move on to the head and then I finish with the arms, generally. That's not always the case, but just in general. You can go in whatever order seems natural for you. I do this because we're going up and down on the body and then we'll go side to side on the arms and the legs. Now all of these concepts can be applied to a larger otter. Say if you want to make it a pin or an ornament or anything like that, you can definitely do these much larger and that's certainly easier to do larger. I really like making these tiny objects so, and I have an order for one so I'm just showing you how I make them while I'm fulfilling the order. It's a win-win. Again, this takes some time, but it's really rewarding. It's one of the ways that I make fur for dogs or cats, or 
any other animals. Lots of tiny little details. It's getting cuter and cuter. Once you have that, both your little otters textured, we'll take a little bit of white clay, take our potter's needle, and we're just gonna ever so slightly flick a tiny bit off. You might not be able to see in the camera the small amount of white clay that's on there, but we will set that on top of the black of the eye. And then you can take your silicone dowel tool to just slightly press it like that. And we'll repeat that for the other eyes. I've got a video on how to turn your sculptures into earrings. So I won't show that in this tutorial, but I'll link it below and you can check that out. Also, I really enjoy seeing what you guys have made. It's super fun. So feel free to send some photos of what you make and I can feature them at the end of a future video if you'd like. If you made it this far, great job guys. It's a very fun and slightly difficult project. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I love to answer any sculpting related questions. Thanks for watching. Have so much fun. Have a great day. Bye.